For over 40 years, Star Wars has been a part of our culture, a part of our lives, and a part of who we are. Now, there's one place with something for every type of Star Wars fan. The Beyond the Blast Doors Network. From the latest in Star Wars news. A great day, an exciting day here on the YouTube channel. To collectibles. Oh, I'm jealous. Yeah, what it's do you want? beautiful. How much you want for it? Interviews with creators. If you want your book to feel necessary, it has to deliver some insight or some piece of information that you didn't get anywhere else. Famous fans. Yeah. And they all, yeah, there's a chaka 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 chaka. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Fan documentaries. This moment, like the force awakened in Ray, but it also awakened something in me. And great conversation with casual and hardcore fans alike. You know, I, and I've seen a lot of things end up on the cutting room floor that I'm like, oh. The Beyond the Blast Doors Network was made for you. New content nearly every day of the week on video and podcast. There's something for every fan. Visit beyondtheblastdoors.com and on YouTube, search Beyond the Blast Doors. What is up, good people? <laughs> I am Andy, part of the Beyond the Blast Doors Network. This is the Hall of Chronicles Star Wars Toy and Collectible Podcast. Normally, my buddy Josh is here, and we're at his house, and we're doing this together. Uh, sometimes we're live, sometimes we're scheduled in advance. But he is on a family vacation, so I am flying solo today. And I'm excited. Shout out to those of you catching us live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Periscope. And then shout out to those of you that are going to catch us a little later on the Rewind. I can see in the chat that we've got a few people here already. What is up, Mr. Rez, Matt, Nick? Uh, Black Squadron. Hey, I caught you guys uh, a little bit ago when you had Yak Face on. That was a good show. Uh, shout out to you guys. This is going to be a little different today, obviously, since there's just one guy here talking instead of two. So I may rely a little bit on the chat for some interaction from time to time. Uh, <laughs> so feel free to drop questions or comments, and, and I'll try to get to them as I can. I'm going to apologize in advance for any technical snafus that might happen, because normally Josh is the one that takes care of those things. And so I'm going to try and, and handle it as best as I can here. Uh, we've got two cameras going on today. We've got the camera on me, and then we've got the O camera. The O, O, O. And you can see we've got the Wampa here. That is intentional, ladies and gentlemen, because as we like to do um, right at the beginning of most shows, we like to talk a little bit about Star Wars news insofar as it relates to uh, merchandise. And we have some wampa news all right we've got some wampa news uh there's a couple of toy bits that came out uh recently that i was made aware of this morning shout out nick thanks for sharing um i was not online this morning so i i didn't hear about this appreciate you sharing with me so i'm gonna do a little share screen here on the first story that i got for you um it's from screen rant Screen Rant. There we go. It says, new Star Wars Black Series Wampa action figure revealed. So this is a picture of the original Wampa that came out with uh, Black Series Luke Skywalker um, a number of years ago as part of the Blue Line series, that second year that they had uh, Black Series figures available. And it turns out there's going to be a new Wampa. So it says, coming this fall, a brand new action figure for arguably the best Star Wars movie. Arguably. Uh, Screen Rant announces a new Wampa figure. It will be a cleaner version of the previous Wampa figure. So it's just not a repackaging of the same old, um, same old looking Wampa. Which is good. I'm glad. I'm glad there's some variation to it. 
Um, but yeah, that, it does not say, however, when that will be coming out. It's just a little blurb here that there will be one. So keep an eye out for that. That'd be pretty cool, I think. Um, what I also would like to share, and this might be a little more fun. Let me, uh, oh, I'm not sharing that screen. Okay. So we'll just go back to where we're at here. This is, I, I put a, the original Wampa here. You can see that the Wampas come a little bit over the years. Um, movable joints, a detachable arm, and this guy, I mean, he's a classic, no doubt about it. Um, but let me, uh, let, me, let me share another screen here for the next bit of news. The Black Series also coming out with some more figures, and I think this might be a little bit more exciting. Let me pull that up here. This is off of the Toy Arc site. Um, you can find this also on Yahoo. Actually, a few other sites are, sh are sharing this now. But it says uh, Hasbro is releasing what is called Heroes of Endor figure set. There are four figures that will come with this, and you can see two of them right there. There's a an Endor Luke and an Endor Leia. Um, there's also going to be an Endor Han and then a Paplu Ewok that will or that can be put on a speeder bike. So there's a little speeder bike that comes with this four pack set of figures, um, th and they'll all come together. Um, and look at some pictures here. So this is your Luke and Leia. I like that uh, we've got lightsaber and we've got the uh, kind of the indoor camouflage cloak. Um, Leia doesn't have or doesn't show or doesn't appear to have um, a, her green, like in the vintage line, came with a green camouflage cloak. But I would be surprised if she didn't come with one. I, I, I would imagine she would come with one as well. Um, if we scroll down here, we can get a shot of Han. Now this Han, again, looks like, looks like the old Han. But I would, I would hope and pray that he comes with a, a long overcoat in the same kind of camouflage scheme that Luke has as well. Uh, that would be that would be pretty sweet. Uh, one thing to note, I thought this was interesting. First thing I saw right away, the the nice blue pants. Uh, you know, this is this is the costuming is great, but if you notice, the knees are single joint. That that reminds me right back of the old vintage figures when they were single joint knees. Uh, they're not. You can even see Luke's. He's got the multi angled knee option. But Leia's just got a single joint. Um, takes me back to uh, G.I. Joe, kind of. G.I. Joe had the single joint. But she has movable wrists, and elbow kind of looks single joint, too. So, interesting. Interesting why they would why they would do that. But, it may be, maybe just for sentimental reasons. I don't know. That might be naive of me to think. But, you know, I wouldn't want to call it lazy. But maybe it is a little bit. Uh, and then here's the Paplu on a speeder bike or the speeder bike option. Now, the speeder bike has come out in Black Series before, uh, but not with an Ewok. So this is the second Black Series Ewok to come out. There was a, I believe it was Tebow, and Tebow looked pretty badass. And uh, I will say that Paplu looks pretty pretty good too. They, they're a lot more realistic looking um, and, and they look kind of like you should take them seriously as opposed to cute and cuddly, um, like they could actually win a fight against the stormtroopers. So, uh, yeah. And then, yeah, here's the box that it comes in. Now it is a box set and it is retailing or is going to retail for $109. So you're getting four figures and a speeder bike in this, um, Heroes of Endor box set. So, what do you think? What do you think about that? Um, cool? 
Not cool. Let me, let's uh, let's let's take a look here. Let's see what we got there. Hey, there's uh, Mark. Hey, buddy, Mark. Um, yeah, I figured you'd appreciate the Wampa news. <laughs> the chat is going pretty good. That's uh, I looked away for a second. I got a shout out, Nick. Here, he was the one who uh, made me privy to these two announcements. Uh, he says the power of the forces uh, bent, but never stood up well. Eh, yeah, that's true. You know, I I know people um, are going to always have some sentimental um, feelings towards the toys that they grew up with. You know, I grew up with the original, the vintage ones, you know, people that are a little younger, you know, 10 years younger than me or so, they're going to be the power of the force and they're going to be sentimental towards those. And then those born in the two thousands, you know, they're going to, they're going to be sentimental to the ones that they grew up knowing. And, and, but from like an outsider's perspective, as much as I can be an outsider, I think toys have in a lot of ways, have improved and they've gotten better and you can do more with them and you know I, I don't think that's too controversial I do think that newer things are a little cheaper at this is a generalization I think you know the vintage collection black series those are pretty well-made toys and they and they really are a lot more playable um, compared to the old vintage stuff or even the power of the force stuff that's my take on it. You can disagree with me. That's fine. Um, and yes, Mark, you're going live uh, at noon Pacific or at 8 o'clock British time. Um, and I'll try and wrap this up so I can go hop on and catch it. All righty. Uh, so news. There's um, a couple weeks ago, or it feels like a couple weeks ago now, There, it was actually just last week. Black Series also announced that they were coming out with four new figures based off of the end of the Clone Wars, which was kind of cool. They, it would have been nice if these would have come out kind of as the right as the series ended, so the timing would have been a little more, um, I don't know, would have flowed together. I think a little bit better, but uh, I think we're all pretty excited that we're getting a, an Ahsoka in a different outfit. So not again, not just a repack. And then an Ahsoka Trooper. Um, so a blue, looks like a blue 501st Trooper with an orange helmet or orange painted helmet. That was the one that I was really uh, excited to get. And again, shout out Nick for... Uh, it was funny because as this was coming out, I was waiting. And and they did... It, uh, Walmart did like a, a slow drip release where they released some, everything got sold out. Then they released a few more. Everything got sold out. Then they released a little bit more. And I was happy that they did that because I wasn't able to get anything on that first go around. But then, uh, you know, guys like uh, Patrick, uh, Nick, Matt, who, you know, you guys are all you guys are all following along. You guys are hitting me up. Hey, there's more. There's more back on the site. Uh, you know, hey, there's more back on the site. I was getting messages from those three guys and a, and a couple others. So I really appreciate that. Um, for if it were not for guys like you, I wouldn't have wouldn't have been able to order any. So again, thank you for hooking me up. Appreciate that. Um, and then the other two figures, one was a, um, a Mandalorian blue Mandalorian uh, figure, and then there was a, uh, a Darth Maul sided Mandalorian figure as well, and they had the little spikes in the helmet. Um, which is pretty cool. And I will be happy to say all four have been pre-ordered successfully and will arrive when they arrive sometime in October. Next bit of news. Well, actually, it's not a bit of news. What we like to do here at the Hall of Chronicles is take a little bit of time and feature somebody's Star Wars collection. And they can be big and fill up room a room or rooms in a in a house or they can be small they can be on a little shelf um but but pretty personal um we we don't we don't discriminate this 
this collection is unlike a collection that we've shown before. Um, and that's because this person has dove full into the sideshow collectibles and hot toys. Now, I know a lot of people that might have, you know, a handful or maybe one. I myself have one, um, and it's a Darth Maul, but they're very cool. The, the trouble with them, and it's not a bad trouble, is that they're expensive. They cost more, but that's because they're far more detailed. They, they wear clothing instead of, you know, just a plastic shell of a figure. And, and then they also take up more space because they're anywhere from, you know, an R2-D2 is, is maybe, you know, five inches tall. And, and the, the other figures are anywhere from 10 inches to a foot tall. So they take up more space and they're more expensive. So this guy, his name's Aaron Brett, and I hope he's watching. Um, he reached out to us on Facebook, reached out to Josh, and then emailed us, sent us some pictures. And just in the interaction with him a little bit, it's been really fun uh, chatting with him. And we're going to post this up right now because I have go. I, I went ahead. This is, this is our website, by the way beyondtheblastdoors.com, where you can link to the other podcasts that are available on this network. And if you so desire, you can support us on Patreon as well. You're supporting six podcasts instead of one. You know, one support for the price of six, pretty good deal. There's my plug. But this is our website and our little write-up. We try to do a little write-up every time we feature a person's collection. So you're getting just a little bit of a taste here. Uh, Aaron started collecting Star Wars memorabilia and collectibles when he was in middle school. Raise your hand if you can relate. Okay, I was actually maybe just towards the end of primary school, uh, probably around fourth, fifth, sixth grade when I was first got my first Star Wars items. But um, in the last couple years, this is when he's really gone full tilt into the Black Series, or excuse me, the Sideshow Collectible and Hot Toys. Um, you know, we always ask, what's your favorite item that you have? Or two items, or how we frame it, if there was a house fire and you had two available hands and your family and pets were safe, of course, what would you grab on the way out? What, was, what would you make sure you would grab on the way out of the door? knowing that the rest was probably going to perish. And Aaron said he, uh, there were two things uh, that, that he would probably grab. Um, one is pictured here. And this, this could be one of my favorite hot toy sideshows that I've ever seen. Um, this is so cool. It's his Bespin. Uh, it's the Bespin Luke. It's actually a double figure pack. There's two Luke's in there, one that you can hang off of a weather vane and another that uh, that you can pose with lightsabers. And um, it's just so cool. This is actually hanging from his ceiling in his room. So totally awesome. Um, his other was his uh, one quarter scale Darth Vader, which we'll see later here. Uh, Return of the Jedi Darth Vader, and it is pretty awesome too. So we're just going to zip through some of these photographs of his collection. He does have a little bit of vintage. He does have a little bit of modern, but he is primarily in the hot toy um, category of collecting. So without further ado, uh, I know this is something we can all relate to. Uh, looks like he's missing a dish there. Aaron, get a dish. All right, finish that bad boy. <laughs> I love this pillow slash chair. Maybe it's a maybe it's a rug. I don't know, like a bearskin rug that you throw on the floor. Uh, but the Wampa rug is classic. I love it. Um, some Star Wars posters, of course, a must for any Star Wars man cave. Uh, with a with a helmet there, a little Black Series helmet, and uh, and Babu. And I see that he's into the retro series. Uh, those are cool, definitely. And some vintage figures on the shelves as well. 
All right, some more modern stuff, a few Funko Pops, Black Series, um, and the obligatory Baby Yoda, excuse me, the child. This is cool. Those, uh, that Sith um, has a book inside in it, that, that holocron looking, Sith holocron looking thing has a book in it. It's very cool. Uh, and that helmet, that classic Darth Vader helmet. Can't go wrong. All right, so now we get into some of the uh, sideshows here. Love the Jawa double set there. That's cool. And the hologram Leia with R2. These are also cool. The Anakin on the uh, little hover, hover mobile over Mustafar lava. That is that is awesome. And you got a set of the classics here. And I love that his sideshows go through all of the movies. It's not just, you know, the the um, the classic uh, Star Wars only. I mean, we've got Dooku, we've got Palpatine in a red robe, which is um, uh, Revenge of the Sith, and you know, they're they're awesome. They're just all awesome. We got some Bespin. Bespin Hot Toys here. This is the this is the second, I believe this is the other uh, Bespin Luke that comes with the Luke hanging on a weather vane. So that was a, a double a double figure set. It's pretty awesome. So pull back a little bit. You get to see a few more. And again, if I'm going too fast, just go back to the uh, website, beyondtheblastdoors.com. It should be right on that front page, right at the top because it just got posted. You can spend some time looking at this and then you can reach out to Aaron himself and, and tell, tell him what you think. Now this Jabba is gross and awesome. He's got, he's got the sludge on his lip, Ugh. but so good. It's so good. And little, little Kawaki and monkey lizard. So we got some Ray, some, uh, um, Last Jedi, Luke, Force Awakens, Han, and Leia. So again, these figures span across all the movies. This little insert here is just so cool. And you got like Jango Fett and a battle droid, a few battle droids up here. You got Luke hanging on the weather vane. Um, but this is this is the quarter size, I believe. This is the one quarter size. Anakin slash Darth Vader, and uh, so, so good. Beautiful, even. Oh, let's, I wish this wasn't a little blurry, but you get to see the whole uh, Jabba's Palace band with backup singers and dancers. Uh, very cool little scene here. Very cool little scene. <laughs> I love that guy. Little frog harmonica player. And then, yes, yes. Uh, Aaron recently just made this box as a stand for it and then built a little ledge so that he could put the, uh, the vintage collection skiff with figures on it. So, God, it's just that all looks so good together. Um, well done. And I think we're getting to the end here, but you can find Aaron on Facebook, Aaron Brett. And let me just scroll down. Oh, too far. And on Twitter at Ron is a rod three. Ron is a rod three. Ron is a rod. I was thinking maybe Erod, like the horse from um, uh, the, uh, shoot, I'm totally blanking on the name. Lord of the Rings, sorry. Erod, one of the horses in uh, that was under the charge of, in Helm's Deep there, that I think Aragorn may have written at some point. Anyway, I digress. This is a Star Wars pod. Okay, thank you, Aaron. That was quite.
All right. Sorry about that. I clicked on the wrong thing and I closed myself out. Those, yeah, those were great. Let me just catch up on the chat here. Um, yeah, this this collection was pretty awesome. When you when you consider the amount of money and the amount of space that those uh, hot toys sideshows take up, um, that's a commitment. That's a commitment to Star Wars, and that's a commitment to what you love, and and it's very much appreciated. Uh, the Wampa chair bag reminds me of my of myself on the. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that that is a pretty stinking cool. Uh, the is beanbag chair, maybe I don't know, but it's it's definitely cool. All right, so I'm just catching up here. That the child is female. Hmm. I guess we'll find out, right? Oh, I think they do. I think uh, the Mandalorian does call him a he. Not that he knows, but he could be wrong. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that barge transcends age. You could be three. You could be 50, and yes, you will want that. Uh, it's already it's already worthy of being wanted. All right, so we've checked off the Show Me Your Collection. By the way, if you're watching and you have a Star Wars collection that we can feature or that you would like to share with us, go ahead and DM us on Twitter, at Holochronicles. Or you can email us at holochronicles at gmail.com. And we'd love to uh, make a connection and see what you got and post some pictures and, and feature your Star Wars collection. Because every collection is different, which is what makes collecting awesome. No one is into the exact same things. Um, and by sharing it, now I get to share and appreciate Aaron's hot toy collection. And I don't all of a sudden feel the need to go out and buy everything. I just go look at errands and, and feel happy that I still have a little bit of access to such cool items. However, I do feel like I need to buy that best bin Luke hanging on a weather vane. That's pretty stinking cool. Um, all right. Next bit of business. Now, for those that have been listening just for a little bit, um, you may know or may remember that as far as the vintage toy line is concerned, of the Star Wars vintage toy line, I am down to one item left on my list, and that is the Ewok Battle Wagon. And it is not an easily attainable item. If you look on eBay right now, there are some parts that you can acquire. There are a couple of Ewok Battle Wagons that have been graded in the box so they're not it hasn't been taken out it's not loose it's just in the box and graded and those are anywhere from 1200 bucks to 1600 bucks at least on ebay uh, but there as of right now there are no loose there are no loose battle wagons uh, to be found now i'm sure if i were to go on some facebook groups i might be able to locate one and then negotiate a price but um, it's okay at the moment. I don't have the funds gathered for it quite yet. But I wanted to share with you a plan. Here is my plan to attain the last thing on my vintage list that I, um, that I need to get. I say need. I really, really would like to get it. I don't need it, but I kind of need it. The Ewok Battle Wagon came out in 1985 at the end of... The Star Wars toy line, essentially. Popularity was waning. It was two years after Return of the Jedi. Um, Ewoks uh, were kind of a mixed review. 
by uh, watchers of Return of the Jedi. Some people loved them. Some people didn't like them at all. Um, they were too cuddly, you know, too commercial. Uh, you know, there were a lot of critiques on on Ewoks at the time. But uh, Ewok figures and toys outside of Wicket weren't, weren't I, I wouldn't say weren't too popular. Um, and in that, what was called the last 17, they came out with a couple of Ewoks. And then a couple, there were um, a few toys at the very end, and, and the Ewok Battle Wagon was one of them. It wasn't super popular. Uh, they're not easily findable. And, um, and so I thought, you know, I thought it, it, I knew that it was going to be something I'd have to be patient for, but I have a plan and I'm going to share the plan with you. And I know it's part of the title of the podcast today, and I don't want to take a ton of time doing it, but I just want you to know that it's okay to have a plan. Not every purchase has to be a spur of the moment or find it in the wild. Um, plans are good. Here's my plan. Uh, last week, I purchased a collection, you know, a moderate sized collection of GI Joes. And I have a love for GI Joes that goes back to when I was a kid. Me and my brothers were into GI Joes. Uh, and from my parents' point of view, it was a lot easier to have three boys all into GI Joes at the same time because we're relatively close in age. Um, we're five years apart. The oldest, I'm the oldest and the youngest is five years younger than me and there's a brother in the middle. But we were all in GI Joes at the same time, which made it easy for my parents to get us GI Joe stuff because then we could all play with it and play with them together. Uh, it, from a tactical point of view, it didn't make sense for my mom to buy me Star Wars stuff, even though I really like Star Wars stuff. Um, G.I. Joe was just easier. And I get it. And so we had a lot of G.I. Joe stuff. And I still have some of those things from when we were kids. But about a year ago, I got rid of most of it. Um, and there's a tinge of regret in that because it was my stuff and my brother's stuff. And, um, you know, it's sentimental. That's why. So I went and bought a collection with the intention of flipping most of it. And, uh, and the proceeds that I get from that and, um, and they're, they're on, some things are on eBay and I always like to start them at 99 cents. So whatever anybody wants to pay for them is the price. I, I do buy it now for some things that I feel are pretty fair, but I'm not out to gouge anybody. Um, the proceeds of this GI Joe, I bought this GI Joe lot so that I could buy whenever one came available. Um, I'm not looking to piece one together. I want to buy one complete, so it's just done. Or maybe, yeah, that's what I would prefer to do. We'll see if it actually happens. But my plan is to make a plan, execute the plan, and enjoy, reap the benefits, right? So everybody's plan and how they get things is different. How do you plan? Like, do you plan out? Is there something that you like to, that you want to get not maybe like a bucket list thing, but just something in your near future that you would like to get, but it's going to take a little bit of saving or maybe a little bit of time to be able to get it. How, how do you go about it? Do you, you know, do you just partition off a little bit of uh, money each paycheck so that you have it set aside? Do you sell something that you have to free up some, some money? Like these are, these are kind of practical, um, steps that I think a lot of us take, you know, it's not like everybody's got a money tree in the backyard. Sorry, that sounded just like my dad. I apologize. Um, but this, uh, this toy, um, is something that I wanted for a long time, but I knew I'd have to save up a little bit for it to get. So I spent a little bit of money to buy this collection so that I could generate a little bit more income. Hopefully that's the hope. And I think I will, but, um, that's just that's just the hope. I'm not trying to break even on what I got I, because I'm, I'm trying to earn a little bit towards this Ewok battle wagon. Now, yes, Mark, with the comment here, the Robin of Sherwood Forest version uh, was the repurposed Ewok battle wagon uh, that came out with Robin Hood. 
it looks almost identical except for the wheels are a slightly different color. They even repurposed the mold for the uh, Ewok village to then become the Sherwood Forest. So there was a little bit of repurposing some Kenner branded toys for the sake of convenience. Um, if you do a little search, a little online search, uh, you can tell the difference between an Ewok battle wagon and a Sherwood Forest. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't even know what they call that, but they do look slightly different, enough that uh, if you just do a quick search, you'll, you'll be knowledgeable enough to know the difference between you know, one versus the other, so you don't get fooled. You can get a Sherwood Forest one a lot cheaper than you can get an Ewok, um, an Ewok version. <laughs> yeah, I, so I, as much as I try to fight it, sometimes we all sound like our parents. So um, those crazy kids. Anyway, that's my plan. I will keep you posted and updated on how things are going. I've already sold a couple of things, um, and so I'm starting to starting to generate my money back, and then and then hopefully that'll turn into profit here, so I can put it towards an Ewok battle wagon here soon. Mark follows up, says the village is a lot better. Okay. You know, you can, you could probably connect a Sherwood Forest and an Ewok Village together, and then you have a big one. That's something to think about. Hmm. Anyway, all right. The last thing I wanted to do with you guys, we're at the, about the 40 minute mark, and we'll try and keep this under an hour. Um, and I know a lot of you guys already kind of know how to do this. If you collect vintage toys at some point, you're going to come across an issue that that happens to a lot of vintage toys. And that is the, uh, the motor in the Star Wars vintage toys freezes or locks up. And that, and that just happens not because anything bad happens, just because they're 40-year-old toys. And if you're not constantly running the the motor in them they will just they'll just freeze up and um it can be a a, a good negotiating tool if you're out buying them as well, like do the electronics work uh and they'll say no no they don't um or the light will turn on but the motor doesn't it doesn't make a sound um i've found that fixing the motor for the vintage star wars toys is actually really easy to do if you're careful about taking apart your toys. The X-Wing is about as simple of a toy to take apart. There are five screws total that you need to undo. And um, I recently got this one from, shout out to Chilled Monkey Brian's, or at Half Moth. He's one of our followers. I got this X-Wing from him uh, in a Star Wars box in, in its packaging. And it's awesome. And thank you so much. Shout out to Brian there. Um, but it came and the light would turn on, but the motor uh, was frozen. So um, I've already taken off, off the uh, front tip here of the X-Wing. I have done undone three of the screws, but there's two more that I'll uh, undo here. And we'll just, we'll just kind of walk through this together because if you have... If you have vintage toys, you'll want to know how to keep them maintained. And if you're out going to buy them, you can use the knowledge of how to fix them as a way to negotiate maybe a lower price. Because if it doesn't work, you know, maybe you can get it for a little less and then go home and take the time and, and try and fix it, which is usually pretty easy. Now, the number one thing you want to look for is corrosion in the battery compartment. All right. Probably a little tough to see in here but this is a clean battery compartment, all right? There is no corrosion in there. And that means for me that we're probably gonna be able to fix this. If the light turns on, there's no corrosion, we'll get this motor working. And I want you to know, I haven't pre-done anything other than taking a couple of screws out. I've not actually seen the inside of this yet. 
So we'll 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 do this together. Um, there's five there's five screws that you got to take apart. So we'll just go through. There's one there, one right in front of R2. There are two um, back here, and I've taken one of them out. I still have to take out one, um, but I always forget about these. I take it and then I try and pull it apart, and it's like. Now the motors inside of these uh, are generally all the same kind of motor. So let me go through this real quick. X-Wings, all of the TIE Fighters have this kind of motor. The Millennium Falcon has this kind of motor. Um, the B-Wing has this motor and the Y-Wing has this motor. Uh, they're, all, they're all kind of the same setup inside, except that when you take apart a TIE fighter, be very you, you got to do it when it's upside down and be very careful because if you aren't careful, parts will fall out. And it's if, if you've done it for the first time, um, the, the pieces will just, it's tough to find, you know, all the pieces to put them back the way they go. It's doable. Uh, TIE fighter is a little tricky because you hold it upside down. Um, and then uh, the Y-wing landing gear is always a little tricky to put back together, and the B-wing has a lot of moving parts inside as well. So when you take them apart, do it gently. Uh, but for an X-wing, it's pretty pretty straightforward. So this, once you got the screws off the back, this cap pops off, but it has the uh, leads on it, so we don't want to toss it aside quite yet. And then the top of the X-wing slides off. And there's one more screw. Oh, there's two in this one. Yeah, I guess so. There, are, there's six. So there's there's a screw right here, and right here. Um, and you got to take that apart, or take them out, I should say. What's nice is that the screws are generally universal in in all of these um, toys. So finding a, a screw if you need one is is pretty easy, and they're pretty cheap. I have a whole bag full of them in my little closet. So once the screws are out, then you can lift up the wings. And here's what you have. Here's the motor. It's it's covered with this blue piece, but this is the this is the little gear that turns and there's a little piece of plastic, a little flap that it that it spins on and and makes the noise. You can see that the uh, electronics go to the front here. And um, here's what we'll do. Make sure you got two batteries. Um, there's a plus and a minus down there so you can see how they are going to go. Now just putting them in isn't going to do anything. But if you go back and then take the lead piece, push the button down so that they come fully extended, you can see you see the light, it's, you got to position it just right here, but the light turns on, okay? If I wiggle it around and everything touches, the light turns on, uh, but no motor, no motor movement. So we'll slide this back right under here. And what I found is that if you just gently move it, With the light on, you, you can see if the light's on, we're getting connection here. That you just, just gently spin it back and forth. And, uh, and it'll start to loosen up a little bit. Now this one is not. It's not loosening up. It's still, usually you can kind of feel it give but this is all you got to do you just kind of got to massage it a little bit um i think it's kind of coming a little bit here so then what do you do if it's not <laughs> yeah i gotta put this in yeah uh 
I generally agree with you there, Mark. Don't open a B-Wing. It's a mess in there. Uh, but it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's doable. Um, so what do you do if it's not unfreezing? Like if you put, if you shoot a little WD-40 in there, that can be helpful, but not everybody likes, you know, don't, that, that's too oily, you know, don't do that. It'll just gum up the engine later. Um, you know, I shot a little contact cleaner um, in there. But yeah, this one's being a little tricky. So all that means it's just going to take a little more time. But once you get it, once you get it uh, going, then the putting it back together is pretty easy. And um, and I'm sure I won't I won't spare uh, any more time here looking at this. But uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll keep messing with it after we shut this down. And uh, like I said, it's pretty easy to get these things running. And I know I know I'll get this running again. Um, it's just gonna it's just gonna take a little more time, and that's that's the way they go. It's a forty year old toy. It's a forty three year old toy. Um, so sometimes <laughs> a, dry, a dry lube. You being serious, Russ? <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, that's how you take a one one of these X wings apart, um, and that's that's usually all you got to do to to get them running again. And again, I'm pretty confident that since there's no corrosion and the light turns on, that we'll get this running uh, pretty pretty soon here. So thanks for sticking with me. Um, shout out to my homeboy, Josh, wherever you're at, I think in Idaho or Utah right now. Um, hope you're having a good time. And thanks for uh, joining me in the chat. Mark, Dale, Rez, Nick, Matt. Um, Oh, who else was in here? I think Shannon was in here for a minute. Um, Re, uh, Rezekai, Vader Girl, it's good to see you guys. And I appreciate you coming in with me here. Um, please follow us or comment or get a hold of us. We'd love to interact on Twitter at Holochronicles. Um, you can email us at holochronicles at gmail.com. We do have Facebook and we do have Instagram as well under the same name uh you can find all of your star wars needs uh, at beyondtheblastors.com where you will get an interview type podcast with pete fletzer you'll get the bombad boys uh, the bombad cast uh, scotty and jerry um, fanboying out you'll get shannon at postcards from galaxy's edge where lately she's been on video game um breakdowns as far as like the new one coming out and star wars she's got an article on the on the new star wars lego game and i think tomorrow or sometime this week she's going to have an anniversary article on knights of the old republic which is a super even today is still a super popular video game maybe arguably one of the best so um then you've got david at uh beyond the blast doors live thursday nights Friday nights is streaming Star Wars where they talk all things Disney plus Star Wars related. And yeah, Saturdays is the bomb bad boys. Sundays we have off for a day of rest. And then Mondays is with us. We talk about toys. So every everything that you could possibly want from a Star Wars experience, um, you can find it beyond the blastwars.com. Thanks for listening, watching, subscribing, liking, commenting and sharing with your friends. This is Andy, Hollow Chronicles. Thank you so much for joining us. We're out. I'm out. Go play with your toys. <laughs>